Hi, in this session, I'll go through how to create a BCG matrix. The BCG matrix, or otherwise known as a growth share matrix, was created by Bruce Henderson from the Boston Consulting Group back in the 70s. It's basically a tool that helps you analyze business units or products. In some circles, it's actually fallen out of favor, but it's still used and referenced in some occasions. Now, the analysis for the BCG matrix is based on relative market share and also the market growth. And based on that, there are four categories of products or business units. We have the cash cows, and this is generally the BUs or products that have a high market share but low growth. Basically, it's just milking money. Now, the other area here is the star where we would have a product or business unit that has high market growth and high market share. Uh, these, since it's got a high market growth, it's taking in a lot of money. So you need to feed this product be a lot of money um, to make money. Now we have another area here, this other quadrant, which is the question mark. They also call this the problem child. These are products that be used where there is high market growth, but the market share is low. So Ideally, maybe there's an investment in this particular area where it can become a star or maybe if something doesn't go right, it may become a dog. And when we get to the dog, these are the products where there is a low market share and low market growth. And generally, for the most part, companies would want to get rid of these products or be used. So that's a little overview of the BCG matrix. How do we create it? Well, ideally you can probably create it in a PowerPoint slide. Uh, there are some pros and cons on creating it in an Excel where there's some advantages where when you change some of the data, it would automatically resize the circles. And I'll show that later on once it's completed. But basically you need a table like this. You need uh, your products for your rows and you need your market share for a column the market share of the largest competitor at another column and that gives you your relative market share because if you're if you're focusing on your product you want to compare it against the largest competitor now in, in our example we're going to use products not be used so the rel relative market share is basically a divisor so it's basically the market share divided by the market share of the largest competitor now that that is a calculated cell there and it's calculated off of these two so the next column here is the market growth and the last column is the revenue. So this is basically a bubble chart or a bubble chart is almost like a scatter chart but then it's got an extra access to size these bubbles. And if we were to look at these three uh, data points here, this would be our X, this would be our Y, and this would be our Z. So that determines the circle here. This determines the X axis column E here determines the Y axis. So let's see how we chart this. I'm going to go ahead and just copy this and put it into another cell. Let me select that. Control C to copy. Go to another sheet here. Control V to paste. And you can see that it's pasted over the calculation too. So now I'm going to chart this out. And so the areas that I want to pick up are just D to F here, column Z to F. And I'm going to pick up starting with product 1 here in cell D2 to F5. So when I select that, I'm going to go ahead and insert a bubble chart. So I'm going to select this 3D bubble chart. It looks kind of nice. So let me move this over here. So I'm going to work on the x-axis first, which is the relative market share axis, and then work on the market growth axis, the y-axis. What I want to do here is right-click on the axis to bring up the format axis. And here I want to have the values in reverse order. So instead of going from left to right and ascending, let me go from right to left ascending. So that's going to swap it around. And what I want to do next is change the where the vertical axis crosses the horizontal axis. I don't want to have it at zero. Kind of want to have it, want to have it at the midway point. So as you can see, our data kind of stretches all the way out to 1.4. So I'm going to make that 0.75 so it's going to be in the middle. So I can just tab that to just, without closing this. If I just press the tab key, it will input that in. And 
let's see, it kind of works out just well. So let me go ahead and just remove this legend here. It's probably skewing the visual aspect of this. Let me go and select that and press delete. And it kind of falls within the middle right now. So what I want to do next is bring this x-axis up here into the middle too. So I'm going to go ahead, I don't need to close this window here. I can just select the y-axis here and it will bring up some of the options to choose. And what I want to do here is kind of move this up. So same as what we did with the where the axis is crossed. Let me go and select that and have it cross. Since we're looking at something near, let's see, we have market growth up to about 80, 90, 80 and probably that's why Excel is automatically putting our maximum at 100 percent. I uh, maybe we can change that to 90. Let's change that to 90 or 0.9. Yeah, let's see. Let me go ahead and tab that, and okay, that looks pretty good. So I want to have this X kind of at the middle. And at the middle between 90 and negative 30%, that's there because it kind of uh, it kind of charted this out too. So, it's, it's, so you'll, you'll, you'll notice that when you create this chart, there's a lot of massaging of the, the chart aspects that you have to deal with. So let's make this, uh, the midpoint between 90 and 30 is probably going to be maybe around 30. Let me see, let me try that. 0.3 tab. And that's kind of there. So 30 to 30 to negative 30, that's 60. 30 to 90, that's 60. So there's a difference. So that's right in the middle. So what I would want to do after that is I just kind of want to remove all this extra stuff that's kind of clouding up the chart. So I want to get rid of the labels here. I want to get rid of these labels here. Uh, and I also want to get rid of these grid lines. So I'm just going to go ahead and select the grid lines and press delete. That removes that. For the labels, I'll just select the y-axis I was on there and under axis labels click none and then here for these axis labels click none All right so I probably don't need these tick marks but having them here is okay so right now I want to add the labels here so this is, I want to make sure this is the product one excuse me I think this was product three or four but let me go ahead and close this window so what I want to do is add labels here. So I'm going to go right click that and go to add data labels. Now you notice that it's added the percentages of the market growth. I think this is 5%, 60%, yes. What we can do is even though it's added this here, we can actually just change it. We can go ahead and select each one and have it reference to the product names. Now right now the way that it's looking at it, it's looking at the market growth and adding that label there. We can just change that. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that one. And 5%, I know that's product two. So I'm, I'm gonna go up here in the form of the bar and just press equal and click on product two here. And so what it's gonna do, it's gonna add that reference and put product two as a name here. Once I press enter, you'll see that it's entered that. And I can do the same for the rest of these here. So 60% here, that's gonna be product three equal and then select that press enter and 80% that was product 4 and go ahead and press equal and select product 4 press enter and product and this was the last one which is product 1 select that go up to the form of the bar press equal and then choose product 1 cell and press enter so now I've got all that's there I can adjust things right here I can add a label I can go up there to layout, add a data label for the below. So I can just add the, well not a data label, an access title. So I can add an access title for below. That I want to have as the relative market share. After I select that, I can actually go to the form the bar here and press equal and click there. And it's going to put that there. Same with here. You can add the access title, vertical access, rotated title and I can just it's put it here but I'm gonna move it over here later but let me go ahead and reference the market growth first so I click on that press enter and now it's over here now I can just move this over let me go ahead and select that and just kind of move it over here so you notice that it kind of covers the x-axis here so I'm gonna go and just select the chart here and I'm gonna move it a little bit let me kind of move this over a little bit 
and that should work. So the rest of it is just more or less formatting now. And so I can just put the labels here. I can go under the insert, go to text box, and this first one is a star. So I'm going to put star. And then I can just select, I can actually just select that and press uh, control D, which is the duplicate, and just do it three times. So I, I'm keeping the the format. I'm going to bring this over. Now I'm bring this over here and call this dog D O G. Bring this over here. This is the question mark. And bring this over at the bottom. And this is the cow. So. One of the nice thing about Excel creating the BCG matrix in Excel is you can change the revenue sizes and they will change all the sizes of the circles automatically. So you did this in PowerPoint if you change the size if you're doing this as a template and you wanted to put other products or in there and adjust it you'd have to adjust everything else in terms of the size but as you can see here if this particular product product 2 was actually we changed the revenue to maybe 400 you notice once I press enter, it will reflect and change the other sizes of these circles. You can see now the other one's grown bigger, whereas that grew smaller. So that's kind of a nice thing about creating a BCG matrix within Excel. Yeah, you can adjust some of these other figures here, but once but once you do, it will skew the the X and Y axis, and you would have to go back into there and adjust it to make it centered here. So there's a way that you can create a BCG matrix in Excel. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching.